Today we're going to be talking about Venezuela, Russia, China, the U.S. And yeah, sure, why not? Let's throw Cuba in there and see who else uh, wants to participate in tonight's uh, party. Stay tuned for more. Lambo, relax. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. It's all just, uh, you know, bullshit to get you scared, to get everybody scared. But, dude, everything's fine, bro. There's not gonna be no World War Three or anything crazy like that. It's basically, it's basically just gonna be another Cold War. Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome back to another fun-packed episode of uh, my show. Well, it's me and Lambo's show, but it's really just my show. I pay all the fucking bills here, so it is what it is. All right, guys. Well, today we're going to be talking about Russia and Venezuela and Cuba and China and all that stuff because it's very important. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Look, you guys hear that bell that's out there while I drink my coffee? See if you guys can hear that. Of course, as soon as I want to hear the bell, the bell doesn't sound. He just passed by. No bell. No bell. Hey, fuck you and trying to make me, you know, trying to make me look stupid in front of my fucking friends here. Anyways, I was just wanting to say that, you know, that guy that uh, was ringing his bell is like a little cart that sells fermented pineapple juice and stuff like that, which is, you know, for those of you out there from the hood, street wine-ish. Tropical street wine. Not bad. Not bad. Good stuff. Good stuff. So yeah, like I, I mean, here you can literally sell alcohol, homemade alcohol, in, in your little cart, just rolling around and selling it. I know, right? It's such an oppressive, horrible fucking place it is out here in Mexico. Ugh. Anyways, so let's get to talk about what you guys came here, what you guys clicked on uh, that thumbnail and so on and so forth. Besides my fans, you know, but everyone out there that doesn't know who the hell I am, you guys clicked on my thumbnail for a reason. Assuming YouTube even. Uh, put it in your suggestions or recommended it to you. So, hey, if you're here and you and you never met me, welcome. We like to talk about all kinds of stuff. In fact, I would like to involve my horse. Uh, you know, how, again, you know how just like Joe Rogan has uh, Jamie? You know, that's why I have him back there. He's over there, you know, uh, working the computers and uh, giving me information and stuff. Yeah. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> Enough horsing around. And I got, I got a bag full of these fucking horrible jokes. Well, today we're going to be talking about, you know, all those things that I mentioned. You know, again, you know, the, the relationship with uh, Venezuela and the U.S. and Russia and now China's involved, well, they've been involved. And, and then now Cuba's involved. They've also been involved. And, and all these other countries that are all surrounding this hot mess, okay? That, again, it doesn't matter where you are, what kind of news you listen to, what, you know, where, where you, where, what part of the aisle you're, you're standing on, you have like some sort of opinion on this. You guys have some sort of uh, say in this. You know, all this is affecting everyone. But let's digress, I digress. You know, let's get into the, the nitty gritty. As you guys already know, as Americans, you guys are being spoon fed, force fed, literally the idea that Venezuela is, you know, going through a humanitarian crisis and this humanitarian crisis is being brought upon by the Venezuelan president and the Venezuelan regime and the Venezuelan, uh, you know, people, you know, the people who are in government. And that everyone in Venezuela is up in arms and, and praying and, and uh, literally begging the U.S. to come in there and take over. That's the news you guys keep getting told over there. But the reality is, is that, you know, Venezuela is just like a lot of countries. You know, I'm going to compare Venezuela to Spain or compare Venezuela to... I don't know, um, England, or compare it to maybe Argentina. You know, compare it to another country, you know, that you guys can see as another country. Because again, a lot of people out there, you know, you guys hear Venezuela, and you guys are, just like when you hear Mexico, and you guys are fucking thinking third world country, everything's a fucking mess. But the reality is, it's, it's actually closer to a first world country, and especially when we're talking about Venezuela. Um, so long story, I'm not going to be here talking about the whole history as to how Venezuela became the richest country in Latin America and so on and so forth, but it has a lot to do with oil, all right? And for, for anyone that's been living under a rock for like 30 years or whatever. But again, you know, to give you a really, to make a long story long, 
you know, literally what happened with Venezuela is the same thing that's happening in Saudi Arabia, only a little different. So in Saudi Arabia, all the oil belongs to the Saudis. And then, as you guys know, what happens in Saudi Arabia and in a lot of these parts of the Middle East, you know, um, most of that oil money goes to just a handful of people while the rest of the population, the millions and millions and millions and millions of people are living, literally eating dirt, okay? You know, the, the desert sand, that's what they have to eat. Water, they sweat and they drink that water, okay? That, that's how people are living out there, for the most part. You know, and again, it's all thanks to the U.S. and the U.S. influence, you know, upon, you know, this whole area. So right now, what's going on in Venezuela is that what's been going on in Venezuela for a very long time has been ever since, since, ever since Chavez has been in power and then Maduro, you know, henceforth afterwards in power has been that literally what they said was that, okay, we have a lot of riches in this country. So instead of giving it to just a few oligarchs, we're going to give it to all the people. All right, and they have a working version of socialism there. Now, again, I'm not here to start talking about you know socialism and communism and you know, which is the best government and which is the best this or that. No, we're just I'm just here to kind of give you the facts so you guys can get an idea, a better idea as to what the hell's going on. All right, I'm pretty sure that most of you guys listening to me right now, or they clicked on this, or, or you know they're watching this, you guys already know that Venezuela is literally having a hostile takeover by the U.S. You know the U.S. is literally taking over Venezuela one way or another. Now, America, the United States wants to invade Venezuela, but they can't invade Venezuela because there's too many factors that are not allowing them to take over. In fact, the same thing is happening in Iran right now. Okay, I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video. We're also going to be talking about Iran. But again, the United States right now is either trying to, you know, invade Iran and in, or invade Venezuela. Either or. Now, why are you hearing more about Iran and you're not hearing anything about Venezuela? Is because they're literally trying to forcibly trying to invade Iran right now, only because the what's happening, you know, with them trying to take over Venezuela is not working out. But again, let, let, let me let me just give you a little background on this. Venezuela, again, you can just compare it to either France or you know Spain or Taiwan or any you know any any country out there that's you know a, a country that that's you know run normally, I guess. You know what I mean? I remember there's a lot of countries out there. You know, like a lot of countries in Africa, a lot of countries in Central America, a lot of countries in Southeast Asia that are just pretty fucked up, okay? For a million reasons. We're not here to talk about that. But we're just here to talk about, you know, dispelling, you know, the the myths, the truths, you know, all these things out there and giving you some facts. So again, Venezuela has been literally destroyed by the U.S. How has it been destroyed? It's been destroyed through sanctions, through economic warfare, and through many, many other things. So for example, everyone needs a bank account. No matter who you are, you right, you need a bank account in order to transfer money and transfer things. So imagine if a country as a whole is not allowed to have a bank account or transfer funds through banks. So that's one of the things they did to Venezuela. Another thing that they did to Venezuela was impose these sanctions, okay? And, and impose these, um, damn, I'm, I'm skipping out on the word. But anyways, these, this embargo on, on Venezuela. So what that meant, first of all, Venezuela couldn't use the banking system, so they couldn't transfer funds from one place to the other. And then on top of that, they put this embargo and these sanctions on Venezuela, meaning that if any country would do business with Venezuela, then all of a sudden that country was an enemy of the United States of America. But because of all the things that are happening right now, you know, the United States is, ma is making a lot of enemies all around the world. So for example, Russia has a lot of financial interest within Venezuela and they want to protect their financial interests. Same as China. China also has a lot of financial interest in Venezuela and they want to protect those investments. But as you guys can already see, um, the United States is at war with Russia. They are at war with China. So all of a sudden now, Russia and China are putting their military you know, uh, pieces within Venezuela and around Venezuela in order to protect their financial assets, to protect their assets. And why are they not caring anymore about what the US, you know, about their sanctions and about their, you know, um, you know, all the stuff that they're doing is literally because 
Well, they're doing the same thing to China and Russia. So if all of a sudden Russia is not allowed to do business on the world stage either, well, then why are they not going to do business with other countries that can't do business? You feel me? So all of a sudden, as I'm, you know, watching, you know, the the more recent news, you know, talking about Cuba, Venezuela, and other countries like that, and you're seeing literally that Russia is every single day getting closer and closer to these countries. So right now, everyone knows that Cuba's starving. Cuba has been starving for, for a very, very long time. But Cuba is still a very humanitarian nation. They have been. They, they have been for a very long time. Um, you can go to any country in Africa and they all love Cubans. You can go to a lot of countries around the world and they love Cuba. Even though they're starving, they still provide health. They still provide help. They still provide education. They still provide a lot of these things, not just for their own people, but for other countries around the world. Venezuela was no different. In fact, Venezuela and Cuba are tight. So as soon as, uh, you know, Trump has been in power, you know, he has literally been putting a vice grip on Cuba. So Cuba's already pretty much in dire, you know, situations, but now they're even more dire. If you guys remember just a few years ago when Obama was president, you know, he, Obama was forced to lift the embargo and become friendly again with Cuba. But ever since Trump has been in power, you know, Trump don't give a fuck about no one or anything. So he literally brought everything back to how it used to be. In fact, he rolled everything back all the way back to how it was in the 90s. In the 90s, in Cuba, is considered as the special time. Why is it called the special time? Because everyone was literally beyond starving to death. And that's where Cuba is now, but you're not hearing any of this shit on the news. Unless you're in Miami or, you know, you're very sympathetic to the situation. You got cute family in Cuba or what have you. You're most likely not hearing any of this, this stuff. And why are they punishing Cuba? Well, we should ask Trump. Trump literally said that we are, we're, that, that the United States wants to make Cuba suffer, okay? Because they helped out Venezuela. What a great country, right? And again, you know, the United States of America is going around the world um, they've been going around the world making a lot of countries suffer, all right, in lieu of what? Democracy, right? Because, you know, like they have to make a lot of people suffer and die and starve to death so that, you know, they can impose their democracy, which, as you guys know, is doing amazing things in the United States and other parts of the world, right? You know, this is where you were, I put a scene of uh, people protesting in France and people, you know, protesting all around the world over this democracy bullshit, okay? So... I know I go long, you know, today is a rant, you know, talking about all this shit, but you know, what I, what I really want to talk about is the fact that, you know, even though I've already mentioned this in a video last week, I'm, I'm going to be talking about this a lot more because a, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, actually, uh, Russia came out and said that they are now directly doing business with Venezuela. And how are they directly doing business with Venezuela? Well, because of, ta-da, cryptocurrency. Okay, and uh, and big, you know, not Bitcoin, but just this technology. All right, let me let me put a little let, let me diverge in this conversation for one quick second because I was watching earlier today um, one of these silver gold channels. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I love gold and I love silver, and I implore you guys to also have gold and silver. Okay, not just Bitcoin and all this other stuff, but anyways, this very um, gold and silver heavy. Um, channel was literally just talking about how you know Bitcoin is a scam you know crypto is a scam all this shit is just you know another Ponzi scheme another bubble another this another that and it's like you know people just don't understand what this shit really means because again you know for any, anyone out there that only thinks that this shit is just to make money penny stocks and trading you know yeah you guys are gonna end up being the losers at the end of the day and you know just like that guy that was saying like this shit's a ponzi scheme again you're the losers because you you're, you're choosing not to understand this stuff but right now again we have proof in the pudding literally proof as to how this stuff works okay so I wish that silver guy, you know what I mean, would watch my channel so that he can understand this. And I know he understands this, just like Peter Schiff understands this. They understand it. The thing is that they also sell gold and silver. And if they tell people to buy Bitcoin, well, they're not buying their gold and silver. So, you know what I mean? They have, they, they have a biased opinion. But at the end of the day, if you believe in gold and silver, then you'll believe also in, in cryptocurrency. Because what cryptocurrency allows is for it allows um, for the transfer of... Uh, of, of uh, wealth in the 21st and 22nd and 23rd centuries and, and beyond. Because as much as we love gold and silver, we, we all got to realize that we are in a digital age right now. And uh, 
you know, I, I can't necessarily buy things, you know, with physical silver or physical gold, even if they were money or currency. I just, I, I'm not, it's not, uh, it's not um, physically a good thing. You know what I mean? It's not physically, um, what is it, a good option? You know what I mean? It's, it's a big, heavy fucking thing, all right? But all of a sudden, I can have millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of value within a digital form and no one can ever take that away from me. But again, this is not a conversation about that, okay? We talk about all that stuff on this channel all the time. If you want more information on, you know, Bitcoin, blockchain, crypto, all this shit, just look at another video. Right now, we're talking about the importance of what's going on right now around the world and, and how this stuff is really, you know, playing a, playing a major role in all this stuff. Because again, right now, up until they were using cryptocurrency, as uh, Russia and Venezuela were trading, or China and Venezuela were trading, like Venezuela was giving them oil, and uh, Russia was giving them technology or tanks or what have you, they had to, you know, trade stuff. And a lot of this stuff is, is physical stuff, you know what I mean? Literally, like, you know, tanks and oil and commodities like gold and silver and, and all these other things. But they still needed to transfer wealth and money and so on and so forth. They need currency. They need this stuff in order to, you know, for the people can transact on a daily basis so they can buy their Subway subs, so they can buy their Starbucks, so they can buy, you know, food for the dog, so they can, you know, pay for the phone bill and so on and so forth. And this is where digital cryptocurrencies come in. Okay? Right now people are like, oh, but this shit isn't backed up by anything. Listen. It's not even the, it is backed up by stuff, but that's not the point. The, the dollar isn't backed up by anything either, but yet we use that. In fact, no fucking fiat currency is backed up by anything, but we use these things. So all of a sudden we have something that's coming online that actually would be backed up by something. And, and other subsequent cryptocurrencies are going to also be backed by something. I mean, come on. And what does these things allow for, you know, for countries to do all of a sudden now? Venezuela can trade with other countries around the world using this crypto stuff and get around the US sanctions, get around the US dollar and so on and so forth, as is Iran. Again, let me put this um, little quote right here. I look for colleagues to join with me in introducing a bill to uh, outlaw cryptocurrency uh, uh, owner uh, purchases by Americans so that we nip this in the bud in part because not uh, an awful lot of our international power comes from the fact that the dollar is the standard unit of international uh, finance and transactions. Clearing through the New York Fed is critical for major oil, oil and other transactions. And it is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from us, to put us in a position where the most significant sanctions we have on Iran, for example, would become uh, irrelevant. So whether it is to disempower our foreign policy, our tax collection uh, enforcement, or our law, traditional law enforcement, the purposes of cryptocurrency, the advantage it has over uh, uh, sovereign currency is solely uh, to aid in the disempowerment of, uh, of uh, the United States and the rule of law. Right there, that happened a couple weeks ago. That was Mr. Sherman, congressman from California, all right, the United States of America, and he was literally telling you why they need to make cryptos and Bitcoin illegal. And it is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from us, to put us in a position where the most significant sanctions we have on Iran, for example, would become uh, irrelevant because it's gonna make the dollar and the US dominance literally useless. You follow me here? All right, so again, for anyone out there that doesn't believe in this shit, all right, what more proof do you need than the actual US government literally saying, hey, we need to get rid of this shit or this, sh or this is gonna get rid of us. So right now, you know, j just to come full circle, I know I've gone, off, I've gone off on a rant today here talking about this stuff, but you know, right now we are, afraid as a populace thinking that World War three is right around the corner but there is no World War three it's not gonna happen it's just not gonna happen okay it's not right now you are literally seeing Iran screaming at the US come I dare you all right literally Iran is telling the US 
suck a dick. You don't, you don't have the balls to come in here and take over Iran. And honestly, they don't and they won't. Okay? You already know what America's number one friend in that region is. All right? Israel. And yeah, Israel is only a missile fucking throw. Uh, what is it? Like, they are in the missile range of Iran. So literally, if the U.S. tries anything stupid, what the fuck do you think Iran's going to do? They're going to fucking launch every fucking missile that they have in one direction. Okay? So that's not going to happen. Now, when it comes to Venezuela, are they going to take over Venezuela? They're not. They're not. First of all, if, if, if the U.S. In, in, in enters with troops within Venezuela, it's going to be a lot of countries that are going to be very upset. Namely, Mexico, which is his neighbor. But so many other countries within Latin America do not believe the rhetoric that says that all these countries are behind the U.S. taking over Venezuela. Just because you hear, oh, 30 countries are... You know, behind uh, Guaido and behind, uh, you know, taking over Venezuela. And again, it's like, you got to remember, there's over 200 countries in the world, all right? So, yeah, just, you know, do a little quick math there. But the U.S. is not going to invade Venezuela because, again, every single day for, fuck, I want to say six months now, um, Russia has been bringing in military assets to Venezuela and lining its borders, okay? As is China, all right? Military might military weapons, soldiers, you name it. All right, so if the United States tries to take over, they're gonna have to go up against Russia. And even though Russia and the United States are in a proxy war right now, all over the world, they are not gonna it, it, it start a hot war right now. Because again, you'll hear right now on the news that Russia is bombing Syrian citizens. But if you actually look at the real news, Syria invited Russia into Syria so that they can literally protect Syria from the United States of America. Okay? And that's what's going on there, just like it's going on all over the place. So the same thing that's happening right now with Russia. You know, Russia is becoming a large superpower again. And they want to use their military toys as well. So, you know, if all of a sudden they have all these countries all over the world that are saying, hey, can you please help us? What the fuck do you think Russia's going to do? They're already there. Same as Cuba. Again, this is why I'm bringing up the Cold War again. If you guys remember anything about the Cold War and the Cuban Missile Crisis and so on and so forth, guys, get ready. You think they've been? You think that you know you're tired of all the fucking rehashes that they've been fucking going through on you know what is it in Hollywood lately? Um, they're about to rehash the Cold War. I mean, literally. So what is? So how does this work? The United States literally puts an embargo so strong on on uh, on Cuba that Cuba can't feed its people and they're beyond starving to death. So then they ask Russia for help. Russia is going to come in and Russia is going to start putting what? Military assets all over Cuba. Just like they did before. The Cuban Missile Crisis was literally Russia pointing missiles at the United States of America. Cuba is only 90 miles away from the Florida, from the United States of America. Okay? Venezuela isn't that far off either. So just, you know, keep things into perspective, right? If there is a World War III, the people getting bombed are going to be the people in the United States of America. Again, prove me wrong, you know, please, you know, give me some, some, uh, leave uh, questions and comments and, you know, you know, let's talk about this in the comments. I really want to know what you guys have to say about this stuff. But, you know, one thing we haven't talked about is China, you know, and uh, I, I was going to make a China-US video and I was going to make a, you know, Russia-Venezuela video. But I, I, the reason I, I lumped everybody together is because all, all these players are literally playing in one game and we are, you know, being told that, you know, only two players are playing this game and only two countries are playing that game or whatever. But the reality is that all these countries and more countries each day are playing this game. Okay? I mean, seriously. So, you know, right now, you know, when you're looking at the trade war that's happening with China and the U.S. and all these other things, again, it's not what you think it is. All right? And China has a lot of invested interest, you know, not just in Venezuela, but all over the world as well. And they want to protect their interests. And sure, China might not have an army like the United States of America, but what they do have is these uh, economic nuclear bombs. You know, China owns pretty much all the debt that the United States has. And all, all China really has to do is say, hey, United States, we need you to pay up. And if they don't pay up, then the whole fucking house of cards falls. 
It's as simple as that. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, oh, China's never going to do that. Why would they do that? Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> now, you guys are right. You know, there's, a, there's a, no reason really why China would do that because, you know, China has the United States by the balls in a, in a sense. And, and the United States has China by the balls. They got each other by the balls. But at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, you already know what's going to happen. China is not really going to give a fuck. And if they got to, what is it? Just bite their nose, chop their nose off. What is it? What is it? They chop their nose in order to spike their face. They'll do it. They'll do it. All right. They have. They're still doing it. So you know, you got to. We got to keep all that stuff in in in, uh, in perspective. Well, what do I mean by the Chinese economic debt bomb? Well, look. At the end of the day, you know, Chinese government has to literally just say, hey, you know, pay up. And the United States is going to say, we don't have any money to pay up. And the minute they do that, again, the whole house of cards falls because then nobody is going to trust the dollar anymore and before you know it no one's going to use the dollar and then the dollar is only going to be used in the united states and then it's going to cost you as an american one million dollars per cup of coffee just like it did in venezuela so you know now of course if that were to happen china ends up losing as well so that's why you know china isn't like necessarily you know pushing the button anytime soon and right now what's happening with china and russia i mean china and the united states is that you know china when it comes to the world stage and when it comes to like tariffs and when it comes to like all of these, uh, you know, um, manufacturing taxes and all this other shit, um, what happens is that China is still considered a third world country. And the rest of the world is saying, hey, China, you're not a third world country anymore. You haven't been a third world country for a very long time. You are a first world country. So since you are a first world country, that means that you got to pay, you know, the, the tariffs that all first world countries have. You got to act like a first world country. And China right now is like kicking and screaming like a baby saying, no, we want to remain a third world country. And these are the reasons why we need to be a third world country. And that's literally what that trade war is all about more than anything else is because China wants to remain a third world country. Why do they want to remain? a third world country well because if you're a third world country you get all these special benefits meaning that you know you're barely paying any tariffs you get to treat your people like shit you know all of these things okay that constitute a third world country but they're not a third world country so that's i mean you know that's that's kind of like a major battle that's kind of like having right now so that's why the china and the u.s are kind of like fighting and shit like that and going back and forth and they're trying to figure it out but that's that's basically it right there but China, you know, they're a first world country. They really don't give a fuck. And if they, you know, if they really don't want to pay and they really don't want to participate, they won't. Because like right now, the United States is constantly breaking deals all over the, all over the world. You know, breaking deals of uh, nuclear deals and breaking peace deals and breaking all kinds of deals all over the place. So right now, the United States of America is acting, you know, like and public enemy number one. You know, when the United States was the one that was, you know, trying to get all the whole world together and peace and love, and now the United States is literally, you know, just acting like a fucking baby and doing whatever the fuck they want. So it's literally throwing everything, okay, into a tailspin all over the world. But the reality is that the only ones that are really going to end up fucking losing here is the United States of America. Because we've already seen this, you know, happen in history over and over again. Again, the last, you know, the, the one major empire that really resembles what's going on right now with the united states is the roman empire way back when but you know these have these this these falls of empires have been happening for a very long time throughout human history and this is not going to be any different and the u.s is literally every single day shooting every single day it shoots himself in the foot every day bam, bam, bam. and this is only not it is not going to end well at all and at the end of the day, like, I just want to keep reiterating, keep reiterating the fact that, you know, right now, the United States is trying to cause war, not just in Venezuela, not just in Iran, but all over the place, okay? And they're not going to be able to, you know, create any more war or any more, you know, there's not going to be any World War III, there's not going to be anything like that. What's really going to happen is going to be a major Cold War. And why are they going to, why is this major Cold War taking place? Why is it so important? Well, it's, it's simply because a war is a war. And, and, you know, there's no money in peace. But there's plenty of money in war. One second, let me pause and stop. Okay, and we're back. And again, so like I was, as I was saying, you know, there's no money in peace, but there's plenty of money in war. Because within times of peace, you know, you're only just, you know, the machine, you know, the the military industrial complex, the corporate machine, you know, it's capitalism and all this shit. You know, they only get to feed... The, you know what I mean? If everything is going good and everything is peace, they're only feeding like one end of the of the piece of the puzzle. There's still a lot of 
customers left on the table. What do I mean by that? Well, in, in times of war, you're literally having the whole machine work at full force, meaning that you have the war machine, you know, building bombs, build, you know, getting troops, building arms, building whatever. Then you have the same war machine attacking another country, creating war, strife. And so all of a sudden you have a, a beautiful um, country and this beautiful country is turned into rubble overnight. And as soon as, as soon as that war is over, well, they get to rebuild that. If everything is peace, well, they don't have to rebuild that. If it's war and everything gets destroyed, well, you know, there's a whole country to rebuild. That's a lot of fucking money there. And same thing goes with the, with the arms. You know, if you're just building these arms and you're not necessarily using them, okay, then again, it, it's just, it, it's not really feeding the whole machine. You know, you got to like build these arms, use them, blow things up. Once you blow them up, you got to rebuild them and it's a cycle. It, it continues. But when this kind, when this cycle is not allowed to continue, then you know what we have is this thing called the Cold War, and so you know hopefully what would happen, you know what I mean, is that we would start rebuilding infrastructure, we start rebuilding you know um, you know our own country and things all over the all over the world, and start you know jumping into this uh, new paradigm of the future, the third industrial revolution, whatever you want to call it. But you know the reality is that that's not what's going to happen. We're just going to keep putting more money and more money and more money into you know the the cold war meaning that instead of our money going to fix the street or build a hospital it's going to you know buy more missiles that we, we don't need and more missiles and more missiles and and they just keep feeding you that lie that you know hey you better be scared to you to death all right because we're we could go to war at any moment and it will just obliterate all of humanity and they just keep you in that you know that cycle of uh, fear all right when in reality we don't need any of that but what feeds all that the dollar what feeds the dollar you get what i'm saying the bankers and so on and so forth you know the power the, this 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 insane power that all these entities have again this is why this stuff is so important because if all of a sudden you know we're seeing uh, countries not people but countries using cryptocurrency in order to get around these sanctions get around this bullshit we're seeing people within the countries using other cryptos and they're using this new technology in order to get around all this bullshit and eventually take the power away from the dollar, take the power away from these empires, take the power away from these oligarchs. Well, well before you know it, we will have actual peace. We will have the power back. But as of right now, guys, you know, this war has only begun. And this hot and this this cold war is not going to turn into a hot war, but it will be a war. All right? And it's going to be the people versus these governments. It's as simple as that, all right? And, uh, you, you know, we need to arm ourselves however best way we can. The best way we really can arm ourselves is with knowledge, is with books, is with information, and so on and so forth. It's not just listening to me and others talking about this stuff, but it's being able to spread this knowledge, okay, to as many people as will listen. And continuing this conversation and talking about these things and so on and so forth. So again, today I just had a humongous rant. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's already gone over half an hour here. But this is just the beginning of this conversation that I want to continue having here every single week. Maybe even more than once a day. I mean, more than once a week, okay? Because we need to start talking about this more on a regular basis, all right? Just like we used to, all right? So please, I want you guys out there to do your part. Spread this knowledge. Share this knowledge. Share your opinions. What do you think? Where are you from? Are you Venezuelan? Are you Cuban? Are you Russian? Are you American? What, where do you stand on this? Stop being afraid. We need, the more people stand up, the more power we have. The only reason that we, that we don't have any power as people right now is because we have given them our power. Okay, but well, we can take the power back very easily, but it, it starts with you. It starts with you wanting to take this power back. It starts with you wanting to educate yourself, educate others, educate everybody. Okay, and uh, hopefully with plenty of education, we can eventually destroy this beast. All right, that has been enslaving humanity since fuck forever. So guys. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for all my patrons. Thank you so much to everyone that's out there don donating to me and helping me and Lambo, you know, uh, feed ourselves. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You guys are the best. I really appreciate it. 
Um, don't forget to follow me on Discord, follow me on Instagram, on, on, on Twitter, um, all over the social medias. Um, don't forget to check us out on, uh, on BitTube, on Twitch, on, this, uh, on DLive, and so on and so forth. I'm all over the place. All the links are at the bottom. And let's keep this conversation going. Please, I want to see some comments. I want to see you guys, you know, talking about this. We need to be talking about this, all right? So stop saying silent. Stop being silent. If you're really that afraid, most of you guys already have a VPN, create a fake account and just leave an opinion with that. Whatever. Just do something, all right? We need to keep this conversation going. Thank you so much, and uh, see you guys manana. Peace. Thank you for listening. Thank you. I look for colleagues to join with me in introducing a bill to uh, outlaw cryptocurrency uh, uh, owner uh, purchases by Americans so that we nip this in the bud, in part because not uh, an awful lot of our international power comes from the fact that the dollar is the standard unit of international uh, finance and transactions. Clearing through the New York Fed is critical for major oil, oil and other transactions. And it is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from us, to put us in a position where the most significant sanctions we have on Iran, for example, would become uh, irrelevant. So whether it is to disempower our foreign policy, our tax collection uh, enforcement, or our law, traditional law enforcement, the purposes of cryptocurrency, the advantage it has over uh, uh, sovereign currency is solely uh, to aid in the disempowerment of, uh, of uh, the United States and the rule of law.